Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Barry Summer, and the, the first time that I showed this picture to my kids yesterday for a practice, they said, Mr. Summer, where are your eyebrows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where they are. My name is Barry Summer, uh, like Bevan said, and I teach grade five at Prairie Christian Academy, language arts and math, and I also teach all the music uh, at PCA. And so what we were doing is we were looking into uh, improving engagement in language arts. And at the time we were covering research projects and presenting and taking notes. And in the past, this hasn't gone overly well. And so I remembered something that Judy Martin said. Judy Martin used to work for, uh, or helped our division years ago. And she said, there's three ways that kids get engaged. Uh, number one is by things that are deeply personal. Number two, by things that are humorous. And the third one was things that are gross or disgusting. <laughs> and so I thought, well, what is disgusting and personal and humorous that, that would interest a grade five student? And we'll check out what the, what the students had to say about that. I, I thought, I opened up my book and I'm like, oh, we're in a unit on poop? I'm like, who thought of this? My teacher, Mr. Summer, he's a little bit crazy and sometimes comes up with funny or weird ideas. And he decided that we would do a unit in LA, language arts, on poop. I thought poop would just be like this disgusting unit that no one wanted to do except for some of the boys. Some people were like into it, some people were like, nah. So it's, it's all I could come up with. It's, it's, it's always funny, it's, it's always gross, and it is very personal. Uh, and it happens to each of us. And so the kids started off now more engaged, but looking more into researching poop. And so their first lesson was on human poop. And some really bought into this, most of the boys, and some did not buy into this. And some found it way too disturbing and ended up having to come up with a a variety of, uh, well, students had come up with a variety of self-diagnosis of issues that they had. One student <laughs> came up and said, Mr. Summer, my poop is actually a little bit black, and I think I have internal bleeding. <laughs> and I said, I, maybe it's dark brown, I don't know. Do you drink lots of chocolate milk? And uh, another student just said, like, you know, I got corn in my poop, I got corn. I said, it's great, it's great. <laughs> So we, that, that is what I would consider a failure, and so I moved on from that. Well, what could we do still with poop? And so we transitioned almost immediately to animal poop. And this one, this one way better. And we worked through a variety of methods of research, of note taking, uh, we did webs, we did jot notes, uh, we did graphic organizers, and this approach was making a big difference in their learning. And so we learned about elephants, and elephant poop, this is something that I discovered and they discovered, uh, uh, they turn their poop into paper. And it's really nice paper, you can still see the grass in it. <laughs> we learned about, uh, learned about wombat poop, wombat, uh, they poop square. So they actually have square poops and they do this on purpose so that they can stack them and uh, mark their territory. Uh, we learned that penguins, uh, they shoot their poop just about the entire distance of their body so that they can stay on their nest. And this is, uh, this is cross-curricular. It doesn't get any more <laughs> mathematical than, doesn't get any more mathematical than that. Uh, we learned that rabbits, because they don't get enough nutrients from their poop, or from, the, from their food the first time, they re-digest and so they eat their turds one more time. And then we also learned that the Indonesian cats, they digest coffee beans and then people collect the coffee beans and make some of the most expensive coffee in the world out of these, uh, out of these digested coffee beans. Uh, something interesting started to happen at this moment. Students started to asking, well, where does all this poop go? I mean, you know, we know we poop in toilets and it goes somewhere and the animals, why isn't all the poop just piling up in taken over the world. So it all came back to people in waste management. And as the students were researching, we saw things coming up such as cholera epidemics 
And uh, before uh, the use of modern sanitization, uh, people would die uh, because of this. And so students learned that the modern invention of the toilet and modern uh, sanitization was, was a very uh, crucial and important one. And so as students learned more, they began to focus on the issues and the implications of clean water and realized that it was something that they really took for granted. And students also realized that it was a big problem even today and they wanted to do something about it. Uh, so it was interesting to see uh, where this led us. And we'll have a look at this next clip to see what the kids said about it. Before toilets, people would just poop and then put it on the street and it would go into the water system. Everybody thought it was the smell that killed them, so they had these long crow masks, but really it was the taste of the water because the poop contaminated the water. We um, were trying to figure out how how we could uh, actually use this um, to help something. Because he told us to all go home and research websites, and we found a perfect one. It was clean, it's called Clean Water for Haiti, and um, we actually contacted the guy from Clean Water for Haiti, and we chatted with the manager for a bit. Yeah, I was definitely very, very surprised at the amount of people who couldn't get clean water in Haiti. Like, it kills people. Uh, so I remember to talk at this, this same event uh, last year from a young man uh, where they connected uh, uh, with experts using Skype. And so I thought, well, why don't we try this? And so I sent uh, Chris Rowling, the executive, executor, uh, the executive director of Clean Water for Haiti, an email. And, uh, and just to say, hey, would you be willing to Skype or we have a class here and we're really interested in helping? And he got back to me with a yes for sure. And so uh, we contacted him in Haiti and uh, we put his face up on the active board. And before that, we organized questions for, uh, for the students to ask. And they asked questions and learned uh, about reverse osmosis and biosand, so the technology that they use in their water filters. Uh, he talked about the cost of each unit and our class agreed to raise money for it. And so we had a goal setting lesson and they decided that they were gonna raise $500 uh, for clean water for Haiti. And at that time I was thinking like, bake sales and stuff usually don't raise $500. And so I'm kind of preparing them for failure, saying, you know, that's a great goal. But if it doesn't happen, then we're, we still tried our best, boys and girls. And, uh, and so we, we did a variety of things. We met with principals, we organized two fundraising events and the students raised over $1,600 uh, for, yeah, uh, for this event, and, and I don't know how. And this got them uh, over 10 water filters, and so we did a follow-up call with Chris Rowling and told him the good news, he, he couldn't believe it, and he told us that this literally saved the lives about, of about 55 uh, people. Uh, I didn't understand really the impact that this had until, uh, until hearing it from the students themselves. Let's have a look at what the students said. We got 10 water filters, I think it was. Wow, like we got in the newspaper, we got like on powerful learning and all the other classes just turned to look. They're like, wow. I, I like, I always thought of saving lives as like, maybe as like a job, like you have to be like a police officer or like something like that, like a job, but like it was kind of crazy to me that we stayed here and then we kind of just got our act together. Lots of times you, you're just always looking out for number one, but then you look at 50 kids who don't get to drink safe water, they have to walk an hour to get sick to survive. And we made a huge difference. Everyone kind of filled in and really liked it because they wanted people sometimes, like everyone I think wants to fill in and help save other people. It came to like a silly part and then like a really serious part where lots of us were like, wow, like we need to do this. From just a small class, grade five class in Prairie Christian Academy, we saved lives. All right. And, uh, and they, 
they did it. They really did. I told the kids uh, uh, last year when, when Bevan asked me to do this, I said, uh, you know, even the big boss man is coming to meet. That's how much of an impact you did. And, uh, and I, I don't know if you know, <laughs> if you know this, but uh, then Bevan walked in the classroom, I think, the next day, and all the kids just went silent. They didn't know who he was, but they knew that he was the big boss man. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the girls in the front, just her eyes were big, and she said, the big cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he's famous. So what started out as just trying to engage students turned into a direction that I really didn't expect. And they wanted to actually make a difference, and this resulted in them literally saving lives. Uh, one more short story at the end. I had a student named Adam who came up who is an, an average learner, not overly enthusiastic about school, but, but there he was, he, was, he was a fine student, and he was excited. And he said, Mr. Summer, what are we going to learn next? What are we going to learn next? You know what? I have an idea, Mr. Summer. Why don't we collect an idea from everybody here, and we'll, we'll write that idea on a piece of paper, and we'll stick it up on a wall. And then we'll look at that wall, and then we can take one of those ideas and learn about it every week. And I, I'm pretty sure that he didn't read Peter Gamwell's book about Wonderwall. <laughs> and I've never taught that kind of stuff. But it just truly, uh, it was an impact for me because I realized, well, that, that guy's for real. Like, it's, he knows what he's doing. And, uh, and the kids were excited, and it's something that they bought into. Uh, and so this is the kind of learning uh, that I would like to pursue uh, to continue to engage my students at, at PCA. Thank you.